So let's do a couple more word problems here. So these are going to be those distance equals rate times time types of questions. So here we go. On a recent road trip, I traveled 750 miles in one day. I drove the first three hours at a certain speed and the last five hours, 10 miles per hour faster. Find my faster speed. Okay, so first off, Whenever I have to do these types of questions, I always use a table. It just helps me keep everything straight. So the table that I want looks like this. So I do a D, an R, and a T. And then the equation that you probably need, and if you didn't know it, you should work on memorizing it. So distance equals rate times time. Super important. So rate is another word for speed. Okay, so now I'm going to go reread my question and I'm going to fill in the six cells of my table. Here we go. On a recent road trip, I traveled 750 miles in one day. So that's the total amount that I traveled on that day. So that's a distance. I'm going to go ahead and put that actually down here below because I don't really know um, how much I did on each of the different legs. So, But I know that the total for the day was 750. So I'm going to put that there. Let's see. I drove the first three hours. Okay, so that's a time. So this will be the first leg. Right? I drove for three hours at a certain speed. So I don't know what that speed is. So I'm going to go ahead and put a letter in there. So a variable for R. So R is my speed for the first three hours. Okay, and then, so now I'm here, and the last five hours, so there's second leg. Five hours is how long I did it. 10 miles per hour faster. So that's faster than I was before. So if this was an R, this would be R plus 10. Okay, find my faster speed. So the thing I want to find, circle it in green, right? That's the cell, that's the value I need. Okay, well now let's think about what's going on here. So distance equals rate times time. I know my total distance, but I don't know each of the individual distances. But I could fill in this first leg distance cell with r times 3, right? Distance equals rate times time. So I could have 3 times r for that first leg distance. And then the second leg distance doing the same thing. 5 times r plus 10. Now look, r plus 10, that's a binomial, right? It's a two terms in that expression. So I need to make sure it goes in parentheses so that I distribute the 5. Okay, now here, that first column, I'm going to write an equation about that first column's relationship. So 3 times r, distance I travel on the first part, plus 5 times the quantity, r plus 10. That's the distance I travel in the second part. And altogether, I went 750 miles. So here's my linear equation. So we call it linear equations when your letters are only raised to the first power, meaning you don't have an extra exponent there. And it's only one letter. R is my only variable up there, which is great. So we're going to go ahead and solve that. So get rid of your parentheses first. So distribute the 5. 3 R is just hanging out, waiting. So 5 times R, just 5 R. 5 times 10, 50 equals 750. So then we combine like terms on each individual side. So here on my left, I have a 3R plus a 5R. So that'll make 8R plus 50 equals 750. Then we isolate the R term. So that means the 50's got to go. When I move the whole term, right, I do that with addition or subtraction. So because it was a positive 50, I'm going to use a Right, subtract 50 from both sides. So 8r equals 700. And then to get the r all by itself, right, our last step on these is divide by the coefficient. So the 8 divides on the left, so I get r by itself. And 700 over 8, I'm going to use a calculator. 
87.5. Well, that sounds like I'm going way too fast. And then I was supposed to find my faster rate, so that would be r plus 10. Oh my gosh. Okay, that's not, not true facts. I'm a very slow driver. Okay, so 97.5 miles per hour. I'm just going to check my math because I thought I had better numbers. So 3r plus 5 times r plus 5 times 10, 8r, 50, total trip was 750 miles, subtract the 50, divide by the 8, okie doke. Well, there we go. So this next one I know is not accurate because I just looked up what reasonable paddle times were and I'm not even a reasonable paddler, but we'll pretend. So last summer I paddled upriver. So upriver means I'm going against the current. So the current's working against me. Um, for one hour, returning, so with the current, only took 30 minutes. If the speed of the current is six miles per hour, what is my paddling rate? Okay, so it's another distance equals rate times time question. So I'm gonna go ahead and make my table again. So distance, rate, time. And the two things I've got going on now is right upriver and downriver. Okay, so let's see. Um, so I have my table set up. If I need to, distance equals rate times time to remind me. And here we go, let's go ahead and read again. So paddled up river against the current. So I'm gonna think about what I'm gonna do with that first little phrase for one hour. So that I know. So one hour in my time up. And returning only took 30 minutes. So that was, so if this is an hour, I'm gonna go ahead and change that 30 minutes into hours, so that'll be a half. Okay, so let's see what else I know. The speed of the current is six miles per hour. Okay, oh, what is my paddling rate? So there's my unknown. What is my paddling rate? That's R. R equals my paddling. So if I'm going upriver, my net rate is however fast I can paddle minus right what the current's doing. So I have to overcome the current and then right, keep paddling. So that will be r minus six. So coming down then, it's however fast I can paddle plus whatever that river can do to help me. So plus six. There's no information given about how far I paddled except that However far I went up, I came back the same amount. So these two distances are gonna be the same. So let's kind of do what we did up above and we'll go ahead and do rate times time in each of the cells. So distance equals rate times time. So one times r minus six, that's just r minus six. And one half times, parentheses, cause r plus six is two things. So one half times r plus six, I know it's getting small. We'll go ahead and come over here now. These two distances are the same because however far I go up, I go the same amount down. So here's the equation. R minus six equals one half times the quantity R plus six. All right, the two distances are the same. Here we go. Uh, get rid of your parentheses by distributing. Left side's just waiting. R minus six equals one half R plus one half times six is three. Grab all your R's together on one side, all your numbers on the other. So I'm moving terms now. I'm gonna go ahead and add six to both sides because that's just kind of bothering me. And so now we have where I go. R equals one half R plus nine. So now the one half R needs to come over here with the other R. So I'm gonna subtract one half R from both sides. Gather all the R terms together. Right, they add away on the right like they're supposed to. Here we go, up and over. So now I have r minus one half r. So you can either get a common denominator, you can take off the I'm doing a math problem hat and think about it. So if I have one r and I lose half an r, I'm left with half an r. So half r equals nine. And now to get to the r, I need to get rid of the half, so I'm on my last step. 
1 half times. So to get this coefficient of r to be 1, what I'm going to do is multiply by 2. Right, so if I multiply the left side by 2, right, and I wrote it as 2 over 1 because I know students like that a lot. So I do that to the left. That means I have to do that to the right. So here on the left, right, the 2's cancel. I'm left with 1r equals, and I have 9 times 2. I don't really need to think about the 1 underneath on the right because I'm multiplying whole numbers. So 9 times 2 is 18 miles per hour. And I promise I do not paddle that fast.